So recently, I wanted to put together a 3D printed case for my corn keyboard to make it look nicer, better protected, and also have an effective tenting solution for better ergonomics. I've been working on this for around two months now, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys what I came up with and everything you need to know to put it together. As of right now, this case will be available on Etsy in the US, and I'm hoping to expand to other countries in the future. Quantities are somewhat limited as I continue to build up stock. There are four different versions of the case and two different colors to choose from, either matte black or matte white. I'm also hoping to add other colors down the line. I've designed this case for MX versions of the corn, which is what I use, and you can choose if you would like tenting for your case or not, and whether you'd like the bottom to have a honeycomb pattern to be able to let RGB underglow lighting to shine through. The honeycomb option works best with a tented version of the case, as the space that the angle creates between the keyboard and the desk allows the underglow to pass through. The tented version includes eight M4 socket screws that work work as tenting legs. Four of them have a shorter length of 18 millimeters and the other four are longer at 40 millimeters. The kit also includes an Allen key to be able to install these socket screws into the tenting holes on your case and be able to adjust both the tenting angle and the tilt of your keyboard. Along with these socket screws, I've also designed some 3D printed caps to attach them to the heads of the tenting screws so that you can stick on rubber bumpers to prevent the keyboard from moving while you're typing on it and also allow you to use the case on a glass table. I'd never used a tenting solution before and I've honestly really enjoyed using this solution for the last couple of weeks. I also designed this case to have an opening on the side that can work for both wired and wireless versions of the corn. Through this opening on the side you can either access a TRRS jack and a reset button on a wired version of the corn or an on and off switch and reset button for wireless versions of the corn like the ones from Typer Active. Additionally both the tented and the regular version of this case include standoffs and flathead Phillips screws so that you can install the corn PCB onto the case as well as attach the included switch plate which is made out of FR4 material. I found this material to be more reliable and sturdy as compared to 3D printing a switch plate. I went for the flathead Phillips screws so that they look seamless on the case and also so that you can use a regular Phillips number one screwdriver to install them. The holes for the screws on the bottom of the case also have a small recess so that they don't stick out of the case after installed. To print these I'm using a Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printer with a textured plate so the bottom of these cases have a nice textured finish. I've also put together a display covers kit that has options for transparent clear display covers made out of acrylic or matte black or white 3D printed display covers like the 3D printed case. These also include the hardware that you would need and they're optional and sold separately. I've been testing out and using this case for for a while now, both in the tented and regular versions and with wired and wireless versions of the corn. And I've enjoyed using these to complement my keyboard. I've also been trying out DSA blank keycaps and Gatoron MX Yellow Pro switches that I've also really enjoyed. I'm hoping to add these to my Etsy shop in the future. Here's a quick typing test so that you can see what it sounds like with the case, these switches and these keycaps. With that said, let's go ahead and assemble the case so that I can show you how to put everything together. All right, so the first thing we wanna do here is to grab one of these Phillips screws. We'll take the case, flip it over, and insert the screw into one of these holes. Then we're gonna grab one of these standoffs. These are the eight millimeter long standoffs. I typically use my finger to make sure that the screw doesn't come out and you just screw the standoff in. And then you just repeat this process for the rest of the holes on the case. Now before we install the PCB onto the case, you should install the display cover. So we'll take our PCB, again grab one of these screws, we'll flip the PCB over, and you'll want to insert the screw into one of these holes here. Let's go ahead and do that. Hold it in place with your finger, and take one of your longer standoffs, and then just screw it in. 
then you have to do that just one more time in this other hole you see here. Now you'll take your display cover, it could be an acrylic one like this one or a 3D printed one. If you're using an acrylic one, you'll need to remove this protective lining it has. You just peel it off like so. As you can see here, it's clear transparent acrylic. Then you'll want to take the display cover and align it with the holes on the standoffs, something like that. And then take a screw, put one in here screw it in with your screwdriver and then you just repeat this with the other standoff here now after you do that you can now insert the pcb onto the case like so and then you take your switch plate and place it on the case aligning the holes with the standoffs then you'll take another screw and place it in one of these holes here and then you just screw it in. Then you repeat this process for the rest of the remaining holes on the plate. Nice, it should look something like this, with the screws installed. And then the next step would be to install your switches onto the PCB. You'll take your switch, and then I typically take a look at the pins on the bottom to know in what orientation they should go on the PCB. On the PCB, you should also take a look at the holes for the hot swap sockets where each of your switches are to be installed. So in this case, this switch goes like this. I'm just going to press one in. And then you just repeat this process for the rest of the switches. Now what you can do next is take your keycaps and install them as well. You just take one of them and press it into your switch. And then you just repeat this for the rest of the switches. Now, if you were assembling a regular case that didn't have any tenting, you can take your rubber bumpers and then install them on each of these corners here. You would just take one and put it on the corner and then just press it in firmly to make sure it sticks and it would look something like this. And then you just repeat this for the rest of the corners. But if you're doing a tented case like this one, the next step would be to install your tenting legs. To do this, you can flip the case over and then you take the small screws and those go in these two tenting holes here. You can take your screw and insert it just slightly with your finger turning it and screwing it in a little bit. And especially if this is your first time inserting the screws onto the case, you will probably need to use the Allen key that comes with the kit. Once you do this a couple of times, you'll have added some threads to the plastic and it'll be easier to use your fingers to screw these in and out. But especially at first, you'll probably need to use the Allen key. After you insert the shorter ones, you can also insert the longer tenting screws. And those go in these two holes here. I recommend that before you move on, you check that all of them are touching the desk and adjust them to your liking. Once you have them adjusted to your liking, the next step would be to take one of these caps and insert them into one of the screws. Then you can repeat this for the rest of the screws on the case. And then you can take one of your rubber bumpers and press it into the top of one of these plastic caps. You should press firmly. You can repeat this process for the rest of the caps. These will make it so that the case doesn't slide whenever you use it and will also allow you to use the case on a glass table. 
And that's it, that's how you assemble this case. Once you're done with one side, you just repeat the same process for the other side. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm planning on putting together a full beginner's tutorial on how to solder and assemble a corn keyboard yourself. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with any future upcoming videos. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or feedback for me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.